Some commentators say we're entering a new era of fascism, with alarming new signs in our domestic and foreign policy. But what really is fascism? And is it really on the rise in the United States? This is America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell on so you can be the first to watch our new episodes every week. Have you ever seen the word fascism and thought to yourself, I don't quite know what that is. I just know it's not particularly welcome at a birthday party. The use of the F word seems to have increased since the 2016 election, like with media commentators warning about disturbing trends in America's political system. And not just when Beto O'Rourke did the Tide Pod challenge. Okay, that has nothing to do with fascism, but it is very disturbing. Even more disturbing, the idea that there's a fascist takeover right now in America. Yes, the U.S. is headed toward fascism under Donald Trump, because he is altering the very fabric of reality. I'm not sure what that means, but it definitely sounds scary. So what is fascism? Is it really taking over the United States? And does it count as a birthday party if I'm all by myself? The word fascism comes from Italy's National Fascist Party under Benito Mussolini, which adopted as its symbol a bunch of sticks tied around an axe called fascis. Look, maybe not the best symbol, but it could be worse. This was their headquarters. But you could argue that fascism didn't really get popular until it was adopted by German Chancellor and universal internet comparison Adolf Hitler. Mussolini and Hitler are of course famously known as the Laughter Brigade. There are a lot of different definitions of what exactly fascism means, but the central tenets often come down to extreme nationalism, demonization of certain groups, forcing people to obey the authority of a supreme leader, and an aggressive foreign policy, plus state control over the economy and many parts of society. In other words, it means the end of anything fun. Unless you're the one in power, then it's a lot of fun. Until your inevitable downfall. For some people, the past three years in America have been alarming, and not just because there's talk of a Princess Bride reboot. Some people warned that President Trump's rhetoric, particularly regarding illegal immigrants, foreign policy, national identity, his powers as president, and the role of the media, is too close to fascism for comfort. We're going to pause here for an America Uncovered mental health break. Here's a basket of puppies. So just how close is the United States to fascism these days? On the one hand, what we're hearing today sounds a bit like some of the fascist rhetoric of the past. Fascism relied heavily on demonizing the other, a term used about people who are different from most of the population. For example, me as a 15-year-old would have definitely qualified as the other. Fascists like Mussolini and Hitler each had their own version of the other. These days, Commentators and political opponents of the president say the same about President Trump because of what they see as his demonization of immigrants. Okay, not all immigrants, but definitely his racism. He has a proven track record of discrimination against anybody who's really non-white in the United States. Okay, not everybody who's non-white. And not just hot non-whites. Remember, one of Trump's key cabinet members is black. I meant the other guy. Exactly. But let's go back to fascism. The fascists of the 20th century preyed upon the economic grievances of the downtrodden in their respective nations. President Trump's election in 2016 has drawn parallels, with the president having championed the common man and winning strong support from struggling communities, areas like Appalachia and Middle America, and that part of Staten Island that's really far from the ferry. President Trump's rhetoric around foreign policy has also jarred a lot of observers, particularly his seeming comfort with dangerous strongmen like Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un and Mike Tyson. Okay, so what about President Trump's nationalistic rhetoric? Does that track with the historical definition of fascism? The president said during the 2016 campaign, and many times since, that his focus is to put America first. America first. America first, and we will put America first. America first! Historically, fascists' intense focus on national identity tended to align much of their country behind them, which allowed them to paint any dissent as unpatriotic. And Trump has not been shy about accusing people of hating our country. Well, they call our country garbage. You can't talk that way about our country. 
not when I'm the president. Finally, President Trump's use of executive orders. In some cases, they have the power of a federal law, but without going through Congress. Trump has issued 122 executive orders since taking office, which sounds like a lot, but it's roughly on par with the last few presidents, Republicans and Democrats. There's also the accusation among the president's critics that the president cares more about loyalty from administration officials than he does about whether they're effective public servants. The loyalty to the president is really the, the litmus test. Before. Mr. Trump asked him a couple of times if he would be loyal to the president. While we ourselves value loyalty here at America Uncovered, we also understand that people should be allowed to express themselves however they feel. Hey Chris, you suck! And then there's- You suck! Get off the screen! Hey, security, could you take these idiots out back? Thank you. And then there's the administration's reported use of government funds at properties owned by the president. According to one form's estimate, the cost to taxpayers for trips to the president's golf course could be as high as $340 million. And that's just the teeing off of the proverbial club. Actually, he may be onto something. Hey, Seamus, can we change the background here for a minute so it looks like we're at my house? Sounds like it's good for branding. Ah, much better. So even though opponents of the president perceive similarities between his behavior and that of fascists from the 20th century, does that actually make the president a fascist? And is there anyone out there who can loan me some money for a new apartment? Or at least new wallpaper? The answer to both questions is apparently not. There are major differences between the likes of Hitler and Mussolini and President Trump, starting with the fact that the Trump administration is not committing state-sanctioned mass violence against Americans. A reported six million Jews were killed during the Holocaust, with many more killed from other groups. By contrast, Donald Trump began his presidency by putting a Jewish guy in charge of a lot of really important stuff. Frankly, I think Trump likes Jared Kushner more than his own sons. And the United States is in a period of relative peace. Trump seems to want to reduce U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. And he's been reluctant to start new overseas conflicts, even when they fall in his lap. Another difference between the current president and the fascist, to which some people compare him, is the freedom of the press. If Trump doesn't like you, he will tell you. You are fake news. But what Trump doesn't do, and can't do, is send police to arrest CNN reporter Jim Acosta in the middle of the night. And while some news outlets are so supportive of the president that they're accused of promoting outright propaganda, actual state-funded news outlets, like Voice of America, are not allowed to create programming for a U.S. audience. Freedom of the press is alive and well in America, because unlike in most countries, people here can publish books criticizing the leader with no repercussions. And I can do the show. Authoritarians like Mussolini and Hitler committed their actions outside of democratic systems, not having to observe things like rule of law, freedom of speech or the press, or a functioning judiciary. This is perhaps the most important point, because in the fascist systems of the 20th century, dissent was met with abuse and even death at the hands of the government. This is not the case in the Trump era, in which the president faces dozens of investigations into his and the administration's conduct. Plus, there are regular protests, condemnation from across the political spectrum, and vocal criticisms from the media and elsewhere. In short, modern day America, despite its problems, is still a place in which dissent against the government can be demonstrated and even welcomed. And if you disagree with us on that one, well, then you're just proving my point. Now, some people aren't saying that America is already fascist, but they're worried that America could become fascist. And I get it. Fascism is scary, which makes it an effective political tool. That's why practically every group has been accused of being fascist. Of course, there's Trump, but also libertarians, and even Antifa, the polar opposite of Trump. If you examine the press, you will find that there is almost no set of people, certainly no political party or organized body of any kind, which has not been denounced as fascist during the past 10 years. That was George Orwell, writing for the Tribune in 1944. Orwell goes on to say that literally everyone has been accused of being fascist, even your dog. And he recommends that we stop using fascism as a meaningless swear word. It's nice to know that some things don't change. So, okay, maybe your dog isn't fascist, but keep an eye on him just in case. 
which is also what you should do if you're worried that the American government could become fascist. Fascism can't overrun a functional liberal democracy. So get informed, and not just from a one-sided echo chamber. Vote. Run for office. Get involved with your community. Talk to people you disagree with, and work with them. You might find out there's a lot fewer fascists out there than you thought. And please, please, just come to my birthday party. Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. So visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.